The following is a collection of gear that I use to vlog regularly. I want you to guess which one I dislike the most. Whoops. I genuinely dislike using, well this is the prop, this is the ESR, I genuinely dislike using the R5 for vlogging a majority of the time. And I wanna explain why, I wanna find some solutions, and I want to set you up for success when you vlog with the R5. What's going on, my name's Andrew, you can call me Pooch. Welcome to the Lesson Light channel. I, this is so long overdue for me. This should have been in years ago. So here's the issue that I have with the R5. Well, there's a couple things that I wanna explain. First off, caveat, I know this sounds like a bougie, ridiculous problem, like complaining about a $3,500 camera that I can't vlog well, like what is wrong with me? But, but hear me out, because I think that vlogging is all about ease of use. I wanna be quick, somewhat discreet, and I wanna be able to get into the edit and not have to spend hours and hours dealing with certain issues that I feel like I get with this camera. Issues like color, I, I shoot C-Log3, but in every environment there's a frustration, and I know the rules of exposing, but when you're vlogging, I, do I have to think about those all the time? The second thing is audio. Now, I used to vlog on the C70 like everyone else did back in the day, and that thing's audio preamps, they must have been amazing. I'd film all day and I'd have no issues. With this, I get peaking, mumbled audio, it's, it's a mess. And you're probably sitting here thinking to yourself like, dude, these are simple things to fix. And you're right. I've just been putting them off. Let me take you into the perfect scenario, in my opinion, for vlogging. Using an iPhone, walking outside, the sun's on my face. I think the image looks great and I can still edit it. I can do a little work to it to make it look nice. This is like the minimal effort that I have to use when vlogging. This is the dream. I don't get this with the R5. What, this for me? Yeah, man. Thank you. It's for you. Gorgeous, look at that thing. Oh man, you know it's good when it makes a lot of noise. Oh yeah. Thanks man. It's beautiful. I'll take that off your hands. There you go. Nice, appreciate you. This is really the dream tool to have for anyone who wants to create content. All you need is your phone. Here are the cons for the phone. Battery life. Sometimes the camera gets glitchy. In low light, it absolutely sucks. So yeah, while it's a readily accessible tool, you can be super discreet with it, it's not always the best. The thing with the R5 that I'm trying to solve is this. What settings can I put into the camera now that will save me time and energy later while I'm editing? I have some ideas. Here's how I plan to break the rules for color grading with the R5. I'm still gonna shoot in C-Log3. I think what kills me is white balance. This room in particular is really tricky. The studio, half of the studio is orange because I have a brick wall right here that casts light that's orange. The other half is bright white. So whenever I'm moving in and out of the studio, things can look and feel incredibly strange. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and do auto white balance. I know it's the cardinal sin. We're supposed to be locking in our white balance, but again, this is for vlogging. We gotta make this as efficient as possible. So with auto white balance, my hope and my idea is that if I have it set to white priority, not ambience priority, but white priority, I'll be able to have a flat, even white balance no matter where I go. Do you shoot auto white balance? I do not. Do you? Only for this. <laughs> but look, right now, you're even, even though I have, ooh, you can't see that, this crazy orange wall right here. And so that's the idea. If I do auto white balance, then I won't get any orange. And I can color grade your skin to look normal. Okay. You know, because it's all about the skin tones. Yeah, man. For us uh, melon and blessed folks over here. <laughs> Am I bothering you in your work? No, not at all. Am I distracting you? Yeah. Good. The next thing I wanna talk about is audio. I don't know why I have this mic here. I'm not recording to this mic. The thing about this camera is I do have to rely on the Rode VideoMic Pro, which 
is kind of the YouTuber staple if you're running gunning, you're vlogging. It actually can be used as a good boom mic in a pinch. But I want to show you what spoiled me. Ah, this guy, the C70. I picked this up earlier this month and look, look, look at this. You see these? Do you see these right here? Yeah, so these are mini XLR ports. And with a simple adapter, I can connect a regular XLR port to this, which means I can use professional microphones. The R5 doesn't have that luxury. So you're either recording externally onto an external recorder or you're using Zoom. The trick back in the day was simply lowering the gain settings on the R5 and boosting the gain settings on the Rode but I feel like I'm always having to tweak in post. So to save myself time, I made a preset. And no, I'm not selling this to you. I just made it for myself. This is the audio track from this clip here. And this has no changes on it. This is straight from the camera. I want you to listen. I turn the volume all the way up. Listen to this. I do have to rely on the Rode VideoMic Pro. That's way too quiet. Let's put the preset on it. I'm not recording to this mic. The thing about this camera is I do. So here's the rule of thumb that I'm learning with this. Uh, it's gonna be quiet, and so I need to be able to keep my volume at a regular tone, volume, whatever it may be. If I go too low, if I get like nervous of vlogging in public and I start talking really low, I'm gonna have to push the audio way too hard and I'll probably end up peaking the rest of the sequence. Same thing though, if I'm talking super loud, trying to fake energy, uh, I'm just gonna peak the whole thing and it's gonna be an unlistenable vlog, which I've done before. So I feel like this right here is the perfect volume. This is kind of how I talk normally. Is this how I talk normally? I'm not too loud? Very loud all the time. I'm very loud all the time. It's it's actually really true. I'm a loud person. I, that that's the trick for audio. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be parked in. Last thing I have to worry about now is color grading because I've done everything else. I've set my settings. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna color grade this whole video, and I think I did some testing on it. I think it's gonna look perfect. I'm really pretty hyped on it. I don't think you closed the uh, grate. What's wrong? You forgot to close the garage. <laughs> Yay. So I wanna talk really quick about, let me get the exposure right there. I wanna talk really quick about the difference between color grading and color correction because there is a stark difference. A lot of times people will be like, I'm gonna color grade footage, they throw a LUT on it, and they're like, I'm done. Or they you know, adjust their HSL, their sliders, or whatever they use, and they think that's it. That's not color grading. A lot of times, that is what you call color correction. What do I mean by color correction? Color correction is simply getting your footage, your raw footage, to look natural. Now, every camera has a specific look, and that's normal. But what about color grading? If, if color correction is just getting the baseline image to look normal, what is color grading? That's where you get to stylize your look. That's where you get to make things have a certain feel. Add greens in the shadows, blues in the highlights, whatever you wanna do. This is how you separate a basic color correction apart from other footage, with a good, strong color grade. Hi. Ugh, gross. So for my R5 footage, for my C-Log3 footage, I've downloaded a ton of correction LUTs. Simply things to get my raw or my log footage to look normal. And I've not been happy with any of them. So I did what I feel like everybody has to kind of go through. They have to identify what they like in an image and then they have to develop it on their own. So I made my own LUT and this is my base grade LUT that takes this image from this to this. And there you have it. That is how I'm going to make vlogging with my R5 better. Again, a lot of this is practical steps that I could have taken months and months, if not even a year or so ago, that would have made this process seamless. I think that in my mind, I had to get out of my head about the rules of filmmaking, not relying on certain auto settings, or even getting a little spoiled with things like my mic. But this is my hope. I've got trips coming up that I want to vlog well, and while the iPhone is great, there is a quality drop-off that you just simply can't beat when it comes to 
great mirrorless or DSLR cameras. Thanks for being here. I'll see you in the next one. I actually probably should get some work done today. Uh, one last thing I just wanted to make sure y'all know is I really am not trying to sell you on my presets, but if it's something that you want, if you want access to them, let me know. I, you might find a Rec. 709 LUT or you might find an audio preset that you prefer, but I can figure out, maybe I can just offer them for free to y'all, hook y'all up. I got you. All right, peace.